such an honour to sit down today with Kiara Moore, known to most as the Aussie mum blogger. Kiara is mama to two gorgeous babies, Miller who is two and Lincoln who is 11 months. Kiara will always hold a special place in my heart as she got me through some of the toughest of days. Together we dive deep into her journey as a mummy influencer, pursuing a contemporary career in the social media world and her mamahood journey to date. I am so excited for this one. Let's get to it. We've got the beautiful Kiara Moore here, which all of you will probably know. <laughs> Aussie mum vlogger. Um, we've done a bit of an intro, so we're going to literally jump straight into the questions. And I've got the questions on my phone, so ignore me if I keep looking down. But let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Before you were a mummy, yeah. when it was just you and Kurt. You bought a house really young yeah. and you felt pregnant really young. Yes. Was having Miller something that was planned? It wasn't planned, but it wasn't not planned either. We um, always knew growing up that Kurt's mum and dad had difficulties falling pregnant. And Kurt's mum was always really open with me and saying that Kurt could have the same sort of issues, um, which I won't delve too much into that because I feel like that's not my story to tell. I remember you telling me about that though. So Kurt was aware from a young age he might have trouble. Definitely. And it was something that his mum and dad were always like really open to me about, which I really appreciated because then I feel like that's kind of why we started half trying earlier because we were like, if we start to have any issues um at least we've got time yeah and we were kind of ready like as much as we weren't as in we were quite young we had our house we both had like really good been together jobs. for forever too yeah yeah like 10 how long have you been together now oh my gosh i don't even know 12, 12 years <laughs> is that bad that i don't know no that's a good thing i think i think we're about eight years when i fell pregnant with miller so probably i think oh, we're wow. probably about 11 or 12 now Wow, okay, so you've, yeah. you've grown up together. I've known him since we were in like primary school. At least yeah. he's behind the camera. And I remember when we got here, we were talking about Kurt and just to get along with your family, but he's literally been a part of your family for forever. My life, like, yeah. Like I can't even remember really too much before yeah. he was around because we were so young. Like I think I was in grade six when I first met Kurt, which is crazy. And how did you meet? That's another question. Okay, so met, we just were down at our local coffee shop um, getting some hot chips. I was with my friend, he was with his friend, and she was like, oh, this is Kurt from my school. And then, oh, he's hot. Yeah, (laughs) I thought he was hot, so I went home and I like wrote him a letter. And I was like, and I was like, on on a brown paper bag because my friend didn't have any like. The days of letters. I remember giving letters. (laughs) Yeah, there wasn't all the other stuff that you can do. Like, we were too young to have phones and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like wrote a question. I was like, will you be my boyfriend? Please circle yes or no. Like this is back when we were so young. Because you were a baby. We were babies. We were baby. Yeah. And that was like the first time we met, but we didn't actually start like dating seriously until a few years later. And your pregnancy with Miller was far from textbook. Yeah. Lincoln as well, which we'll get into in a second. Yeah. But Miller at your 19 week scan, you had like the scariest things thrown at you. Termination, genetic disorders, yeah. the cleft. Yeah. So talk us through that, the diagnosis so, and everything. Yeah, so it kind of um, all started at around about 16 weeks. Mm-hmm. I was at work and it was a really busy day. I was on my feet pretty much all day. Um, and, and what were you doing for work? So I was working in, in an optical store. Okay. So optical dispensing. And yeah, I was just on my feet a lot, doing bits and pieces. And I went to the toilet and I noticed that I'd started bleeding. Oh my gosh, it's the ultimate so, like oh, nightmare. And at 16 weeks, you think you're safe. Like yeah. you think, you know, I'm out of that zone. I feel like I'm pretty safe and you kind of stop worrying Did so your much heart about just everything. Drop? Yeah, completely dropped. Was. And I was bawling my eyes out in the bathroom and I was like, pull yourself together. Like I knew that there was customers waiting in store. So I oh, took a deep breath and I walked in. And as soon as I walked in, the girls are like, well, you're white as a ghost. And they go, what is wrong? And I just burst out oh, crying. I don't know how you do it. I, I would just, have literally run out of that. Because you just like, thought, like you just thought the worst. You think you're losing the baby. Let's Definitely. Like you see blood yeah. and you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's until you realize that lots of people bleed through pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. It's not as uncommon as you think, but you think And worse. first time, like yeah. first time round, you just stress. So I rang my obstetrician and she was like, just come up like whenever you can yeah. get there. And I was like, I'm coming right now. <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> yeah. So I called Kurt and he met me there and I pretty much held my breath the entire car trip, just hoping that everything was okay. And as soon as she put the um, ultrasound machine on my stomach, I was like, Whew, like biggest sigh of relief because I think that was the first moment where I was like, I really don't know whether I'm losing this baby or not because that was yeah. the first time I had bled. Yeah. Um, and then... But it gets really real. Yeah. And really then real. she put me on two weeks bed rest um, to just, you know, keep my feet up. I went back to work and as soon as I got back, went back to work, I started bleeding again. 
So um, this was an ongoing thing and it got to the point at around about 18 weeks, I think, where she said, look, it's up to you. You can keep working. It's obviously putting too much stress on your body. Um, Something's going on. Yeah, yeah, or you can stop if you can afford it, but I don't get any maternity leave yet. I don't get any of that. So it was kind of whether or not we could financially cope. And I don't know how we did. I didn't, I still look back and I go, and like it was help. It was definitely yeah. like mum and dad buying us groceries every now and again and stuff like that. Your village. It's yeah. when your village comes into play and you really realize how much you need that yeah, support. Yeah, a hundred percent. Then um, they actually initially booked me in for the appointment. They asked me earlier on if I wanted to get a blood test and I was like, everything was fine. It was like one in a hundred thousand chance that anything was going to go wrong. So Is this I was like, the genetic? Yeah, yeah, genetic right. testing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, we don't need the blood test done, like the harmony test. Um, so anyways, then they said, let's go get an ultrasound done to check what's going on bleeding wise. So she said, I wonder if there's a blood clot right. that you've got in there inside. Um, so that's initially why we went. So we went to the ultrasound. And there was, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we went to um, the place to get the 3D ultrasound done and they had a look and they're like, yep, there's a blood clot. It's five centimeters big. It's huge. And if the blood clot comes out, the baby will follow. So you have to be pretty much on bed rest for the rest of the pregnancy. I don't know how I'd react. That's like, that is so scary. Yeah, really. You would literally be walking point, on eggshells the whole pregnancy. Well, before I got told that, I was kind of doing little things like I would do little things around the house or do this because I'm just such a doer. You can't sit still. <laughs> it's really hard for you me to sit, sit still. still. And you're so no. creative and you just, you, you, I was saying to Elise before as well, like you have an idea, you'll make it happen. Like you're, <laughs> no, you're amazing like that. Like it's just, you even just stick to your list and you get your shit done yeah. and that's an amazing attribute as like a woman and a mom and a career, like a businesswoman as well. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Thank you. You're pretty amazing. I'm anyway, sorry, sorry. Back, <laughs> back into the story. So you're at the scan. Yep. And yeah, they said the blood clots there and like that was a lot for me to take on. And that was kind of the point where I really did start to look after myself. Cause I was like, I, if anything happened to this baby, I would never forgive myself. And I know it's a lot of pressure for me to put on myself, but as a that's mom, a mom, that's what, that's what we do. You love your baby. And anyway, so that I thought was the bad news <laughs> for the scan. So she's having a look around and she goes, mm, I'm just going to go get like the, my boss for a second opinion on something. And Your I was like, sink. yeah, I was like what? something, it's not right. She goes, oh, I'm not sure. I just need to like check it all out. And he came in and then they got me to go empty my bladder so they could have another look with an internal scan she was. up closer. And it was just like, they were just focusing on her face. So I was like, I know something isn't right yeah. um and yeah they turned to me and kurt and we actually had a mum and uh, both our mums at this appointment first appointment we ever brought them to because it was a 3d scan we're like this will be amazing for you guys to come along which so Special glad moment. so glad i had them there because yeah. it, it would have been even harder for us to take all this information on on our own um and yeah they said to us have you ever heard of a cleft lip before and i was you like it. i remember what? you telling me this saying what the hell yeah never heard i of was it. like a cleft lip i was like no i haven't heard of it and they're like so your daughter is going to have basically a gap from her lip to her nose um it's going to struggle to breastfeed which is always something that i really wanted to do yeah and will need a surgery at three months old and that will be the first of you know a few and I just like turned to absolute water. Like I started bawling my eyes out. Kurt and I both, like, and yeah. my, our parents, we were all crying. They just kind of left it at that. They didn't delve into anything more. She was like, I feel like that's enough for you to digest, which I totally agree. I yeah. think she made the right move by saying like, go sleep on that. And we've made an appointment with your obstetrician. I tell you guys were very, like oh, it's a lot so to digest. Emotional, so emotional. And the next day we're going to see our obstetrician to find out like all the info. Um, and I guess come together with some questions and things as well. So then we went to see the obstetrician the next day. Who your OB is amazing. She is incredible. She has been Highly to hell and back with her. you. And she has been right by my side yeah. through everything. Yeah, she's been amazing. Um, and yeah, we went and saw her. And this is when we learned some more like daunting news. They this said, is scary. "This is really scary." Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm still like got the. No, like, because no parent wants to hear what you're about to say. Yeah. It's like the no. ultimate fear. So then we went and saw the OB and she said, um, your baby has a one in three chance of either having a missing chromosome or having Down syndrome. Um, so genetically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah so, a genetic disorder, I guess yeah, you'd say. Yeah. Um, and the, I, that's not even the part that upsets me. The part that upsets me is the next thing when she said, like, you have an option now at 20 weeks pregnant to terminate this baby. And like Kurt and I just looked at each other and we started like crying. And Kurt just goes, F no, like, no way. It's your baby. I can't, like, that's... And, and to look at her now, like... Oh, I know, that's why it pulls on my heartstrings, because I see her and I'm like, she's perfect. She's like, perfect. She's perfect. And um, 
Yeah, they said we have four weeks to make the decision. We hadn't had our genetic testing yet, so we didn't do any of the blood testing. So we had no idea what the chances mm -hmm. were. Um, and they said- so you had to wait four weeks. Yeah, because back then they had to send it to America. So yeah, we had to wait four weeks and I'll never ever forget the phone call when she called me. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, she I answered the phone and I said, please just tell me just one piece of good news. Like every single thing so far until this point, I feel like has been like- A blow. Yeah, yeah. and I just kind of felt like the worst case was going to happen again, sort of. It's bad to say that. You're preparing for the worst. Definitely. But that's probably not a bad thing. You Definitely. Know, you, just, you have to get yourself and yeah. then if you get it other, the other way. Yeah. Which and thank God you did. Yeah. And yeah, she just called and I said like, can you please just tell me some good news? And she said, everything looks like it is perfectly fine. And Kurt was in the kitchen. I was say, was he with I you? I <laughs> fell to my knees on the phone and started but like sobbing on the phone to my it's obstetrician. It's like such a relief. Like it's just It was one just of those like, here's, here's some good news. Like it wasn't even about, it. it's just like one bad thing after another. It was like, here's the light at the end of the tunnel. Things can yeah. turn around for us. You are the perfect example of always get back up. Like no matter what, no matter what the results, pick yourself up, move forward. And regardless of it, I feel like whether your child was going to have a genetic disorder or not. Well, we made that decision. Yeah. We had to in the room. Then they said it would take four weeks to get the results back. You have up till 24 weeks, but we haven't done the genetic testing. So like, what do you want to do? And so you essentially had to make a the decision then, yeah, and there, then and there and then wait the four weeks to find yeah. out. So were you and Kurt doing a lot of what ifs or if this is the case, or did you just sort of keep going along with the shit? And Kurt just looked straight at me and we just looked straight at her and he just goes, no way. Yeah. No way. And I was like, sweet. Because I felt the exact same way. But in those moments until that happens, you just don't know yeah. what the other person's thinking. Like, but he's you your know. sounding board as well. I feel like you look to each other a lot in different ways. Yeah. And so in that moment, you needed him. Yeah. Oh, my you know, gosh. And he needed, needed each other. Well. Yeah. So the early days with Miller, talk us through that. Like, when was the surgery? Could yep. she, did she breastfeed? How did you? Because you were expressing? Yeah. I yeah. Ex the only reason I exclusively expressed for so long was because their surgeon said to me, it will really, really help with her repair yeah. it was the hardest thing I've ever done <laughs> it was she had about an hour between feeds because when she fed she couldn't feed much properly. she couldn't feed properly um so I was felt like that first three months was literally just expressing cleaning feeding expressing cleaning feeding I don't feel like I really got much time to like bond, bond with her because yeah. I was just always doing which is something. hard to say as a mom because there's yeah. so many mums that you hear that they say oh I really struggled in the first three months of bonding my baby and they're always yeah. like not ashamed, but it's something that people don't talk about enough. Yeah. And I think it's something you and Mila are We're two so peas in a pod. We're so close She's now. your little best mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh my know? gosh, yes. I love it. She's Absolutely. everything. And it's, yeah. you know, just because you sometimes have a rough start doesn't yeah. mean it's always no. going to be that way. No. And the surgery. Heidi had surgery. Heidi's my daughter. Um, she had her adenoids and tonsils out. And putting her into surgery is yeah. something... And I don't want to scare anyone whose children's about to go into surgery. Never and there's people. Pay you can't. You no. walk away with your child essentially lifeless mm -hmm. on a table walking out of that and they're trusting these surgeons and the anesthetic you don't know how they're going to react to it no. like all those little things that yeah and yeah. she was tiny how old yeah. is she three months old 12 weeks old oh yeah oh my goodness and the recovery yeah. from that what was that like you know like probably the hardest thing part that i don't really talk about much was learning to accept that my daughter looked different forever yeah. Like she went from having this great big smile and her face was totally transformed and you get to love and know like learning, your baby for who they are. And then it's like love a new little one. Yeah. Almost it, physically. It just, yeah. It just really took me a little while to get my head around. Like she's never going to look like that again. Yeah. And I like, I always said to Kurt, like, I miss her cleft. Like she's she so, cute. so cute. Like she is and she so still cute. is. She's still the most like, you know, but it, that's a part that I never, ever heard anyone talk about. And it's a big yeah. part that I think is important to know. If your little one has a cleft and is going to get a repair done, it does. Don't feel guilty if you have that little bit of an adjustment, like getting used to like, this is how my baby looks now. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like somebody taking your baby and just going, we're just going to change their eye color or yeah. just going to like it, it. They just, you just got to used to seeing them the way that they look. A hundred percent. And they're only three months old. Like they're, they're tiny. And yeah. with Lincoln, your pregnancy, just to quickly touch on that as yeah. well. You have had, so you had preeclampsia. Mm -hmm. You had preterm labor. Mm -hmm. You had bleeding with Miller. Mm -hmm. You've literally had everything under the sun that is like scary during yeah, pregnancy. I and the things like... you don't want to have. Yeah. I feel like, especially with Lincoln, we were really close. Like we are really close. Yeah. We were really close to that point. And every time there was something yeah something else yep. something else yep. talk us through with link how you i guess dealt with it all like what is preeclampsia what happened to you yeah how did it all happen so for how us, did you deal with it for i guess, us, I yeah. guess honestly lincoln's 
pregnancy was fine and I feel like because of everything we'd been through with Miller it made us cope with everything a lot yeah. better because we were like we've been here before we've had you had pre with Miller too didn't you right at the end right yeah the end. right okay. like literally I got it and then they um I had her the next day okay so they did the sweep to get her to kind of come with Lincoln it was definitely difficult and it was hard because I guess this time with Lincoln juggling Miller and being pregnant and having all the being issues away. you were in hospital for a while yeah so but yeah, I don't know. I just... You just deal. Yeah. You just deal. We just, you just got to do what you got to do. And life just throws things at you sometimes. And sometimes life is hard, but you just got to keep pushing. <laughs> you got to push keep through. Pushing. And before yeah. your beautiful link even came into the picture, you were pregnant. Um, yeah. We actually went through our miscarriages together, which yep. is pretty crazy, our story in itself. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yours turned out to be an ectopic pregnancy yep. and you lost a tube. Yeah. So you lost a tube. You were 24 years old old yeah correct yeah I imagine that was just like well I know for you it was like one of the hardest things and yep. moving forward there's mm -hmm. you know it might be a little bit more difficult for you to conceive fertility wise how yeah. was that knowing that you'd lost a tube because you went into the surgery thinking yep. you might yeah and then you came out I feel like all that whole part of my life affected me more than I sometimes like let on yeah, yeah definitely and I feel like that's why I haven't you know, I always talk about like, oh, I really want to delve into that, but it's because I haven't fully dealt with it that sometimes it's hard to 100% talk about something. It happened so quick. Too. It did. It all, like, it was nine weeks when I had the surgery. Like, the baby would have been nine weeks old when I had the surgery. I'm pretty sure it was about nine weeks. Yeah. It's um, all documented. We'll link it up here yeah, as well. She documented it all on your channel. Yeah. And, like, I still, around like the due dates and things like that, I still get a bit funny. Like, I'm just not quite myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, having to lose a tube wasn't just another thing on top of having to lose a baby at the time it was just like one of those moments i don't i feel like her and i have had a few of those moments where we're like come on like no come totally. on. but i love this about you and kurt as well like uh, you no matter what's thrown your way you just deal with it and you deal with yeah. it together and you're such a unified team and couldn't do it that you're yin and yang like you balance yeah. each other out massively and just seeing you guys together is pretty bloody awesome yeah it's pretty he's amazing cool. pregnancy birth and mum hat off mm-hmm influencer yeah hat on how do you feel being called an influencer weird yeah weird like i think of myself as more like a, more like a <laughs> i'm so proud of you oh. i'm so proud of you because when we first connected we're doing it, it together just at, well we're you're together. honey you're a few things let's oh, be honest but no. you're just amazing and people don't know this they might know it a little bit but she works so hard and she is so incredible oh, it's no. just so nice to see like you're just kicking goals but anyway how does it feel to be an influencer? I don't think of myself as that really. Like yeah. I think of myself more like, I just love creating. Yeah. Like I love creating things. I love making people laugh and smile. Ooh, oh, there's a bird. <laughs> you know, making other mums not feeling alone in motherhood. I yeah. know how that felt. That's how I felt at the start of motherhood and that's why I kind of started it. I just wanted to make other mums kind of have somebody to relate to. Um, and all the people that say like Miller makes their day, like seeing the oh things she says and does, I'm just like, Even it's in just, real it's life, to share. she is, amazing yeah, she is she's... hilarious she is so entertaining she's the best she's the best <laughs> she is just a pot of energy and yeah. she's so gorgeous yeah just speaking of like being alone i think that's such a beautiful quality you have not just as being online but in my life you got me through like the hardest season i've ever been through oh ditto oh like you we're going through it together we have shared some things that not even my husband my family yeah. nobody knows we've nah. sent pictures of things that nobody <laughs> should see like what is your advice to someone who might be getting into it and wants to be an influencer or wants to be present mm -hmm. on the social media world? Yeah. Because I know you always say consistency. Yeah, definitely. Consistency yeah. is key. But I think... Your lash is giving you grief. Yeah, can you I can that? tell you. Oh I can tell. Gosh, that happened to me in the last yeah. interview. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh. Um, and I think just staying true to yourself. It's really... Like, I have been there. I know that. But it's really easy sometimes to get caught up in everything. And pick apart your content, pick apart what you're doing, but just believe in yourself. Keep doing what you're doing. Stay yeah. on your track and don't, you know, think, oh, because somebody else is doing this, I need to do that too. Just keep doing what you like. Like what you love is what's going to keep pushing you and keep making you want to create. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And this is something like, it's your career now, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But it's your passion. I like it would, it. you'd still be doing this. Yeah. I feel like even if it didn't I generate. was for a year and a half, made no money and I still uploaded five days a week. Yep. Because I just loved it. You love it. You <laughs> I just love loved it. it. Yeah. And everyone else loves it. You're just incredible. Final question. Mm -hmm. What's next? What's next? What's next for you? What Or what do you hope? What are your dreams, your aspirations? So like, like short term, I think is just like more things like this, I think. Even because it puts me out of my comfort zone. It gives me those butterflies in my belly. I feel like 
Anything that does that, I love. Like, Get I this love... girl on the stage. If anyone is watching, she is the most relatable, kind, Aussie no. chick you'll ever meet. Pull this. So, yes, I think you'd be amazing speaking, at speaking gigs. Really, like, you know, doing interviews and speaking and stuff like that. Sharing. Just to pull myself out of my comfort zone. It's something that I'm afraid of, but it's something that I can feel like I've got a little fire in my belly and I want to continue to try to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it scares me. <laughs> but I think that's a beautiful, you've always said to me as well, I remember like, like, let's be real, like my YouTube journey has been like this, to be honest. And you're always, every idea I bring to you, you're just like, do it, have a go, have a crack. I've never done it until now because this is something I genuinely love. But yeah. I feel like you love what you do. You're so passionate. You're so relatable. You're so kind. You're so Aww. generous. No matter how big you get, you've stayed the same. Like since day dot, you so engaged Aww. with your subscribers. You, I constantly see you coming on your Instagram story saying, I wish I could get back to you. And I know you genuinely yeah. go yeah. through your inbox every day and try your hardest to get yeah. back to everyone. And that's a pretty beautiful quality. Aww, You're so you. amazing. But yeah, so get this girl on the stage. She needs to be up there. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. And your book? Do you think yeah. you see more books? Probably not. No. I feel like the, the author's whole, ticked. The whole yeah, the author's ticked. That's part of the intro. I need to do that. I think I forgot a lot. <laughs> but I think um, you know, it's one of those business risks. Like I always say to you, just do it, do it, do it. And we did it, and I will never ever regret that because now Miller's got a book all about her and how special she is with her cleft, and yeah. I just love that. But business-wise, it's not been like, that's probably been the one thing that we've been like, okay, that didn't go as great as we planned, but that's just part of it. Like, just, yeah, that's and it. And I think that's the beautiful thing with you and Kurt as well. Like you just dive in and you have a crack yeah. and if it doesn't work, you Try figure it out thing. and you do it again. And that's like with your house. You bought your house, how old were you? Or you bought the land, I 19 say. when we bought the block of land. And you built the house not so pretty soon after? I think we're about 2021 20, when we built so it. So I feel like you've always had this like career, creative yeah. mind and whether it's building a house or creating content or... We're doers, I think. You're doers. We're doers. You're yeah. get shit doneers. That's yeah. what you are. You're just amazing. <laughs> well, let's end it on that note. Um, I can't wait to see what's next for you. Thank You're just you. Thank incredible. you so much for flying here. And I'm so proud here. to be a little tiny part of your journey. And oh, to just, no. You're amazing. You're a little tiny part of my journey. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and be sure to tune in next week for another beautiful moment story.